Welcome to the Books on Air podcast. I'm Suzanne Harris, and our podcast talks to the authors about themselves, their books, and their ideas. Every book has two stories, and our listeners find out the story behind every book. Now, joining me today, you know this, I love children's book authors. The gentleman who's going to be with us today is named Andrew Everstein, and he is here to talk about his wonderful children's book, A Dandelion, story that touches on the sensitive topic of flowerism. Andy, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Good to be here. Now, I'm going to call you Andrew because we don't want to confuse our our listeners. That sounds very formal, but I like that because that's the name that you've written under. I'm always curious about how an author becomes an author. And there are lots of different ways that I've heard. People have said to me that they were readers as a child, and whoever it was they read influenced them, and they decided they wanted to write. I've had people tell me that teachers or professors recognize some spark in their writing and encourage them. I've had people say that they have a cataclysmic event happen in their life, either a positive one or a negative one, and they just almost feel compelled to share that with the world. But your story is so very different. I've got to read this quote. When I read this quote, I thought, I've got to hear why you said this. Quote, this October 1st, 2022 is my 30th year of writing. It began of mere boredom on a 12-hour day, parentheses, on a lunch break. Andrew, what in the world does that mean? I mean, I read that and I thought, did you just serendipitously, serendipitously all of a sudden decide to write? How, how did this happen? Please tell me the story and share it with our listeners. Well, Actually, it was October 3rd, truth be told. I, I found that out after I wrote that. But I, I just was, you know, we every other weekend we would, uh, I was working in a nursing home and uh, we um, we worked 12 and a half hour shifts. And I just, uh, I was really bored. It was like 3, 3.30 and, and everything was done. And I just picked up a pen and wrote a poem called Life. And the rest is history. I just kept writing after that and writing and writing and writing and it, it's it was awesome, and then I started reading to a resident Isabel, and um, and I was going to give it up after forty. This is true. I, I was going to give it up after forty poems, and Isabel, I had been reading to her, and she said, "Oh, love." She looked me right in the eye, and she said, "Oh, love, you have a gift." She said, "Never stop writing, or you'll lose the passion for life itself." And I was like processing that over on my drive home to and from work, and just like, what did she say to me? I was like, I mean. It was awesome. So, that's an amazing story. You had never, I mean, never before had you s- just sat down and started to write. No, not unless I had to for school. And and uh, I mean, I I felt you know it's different because you you're you're just like reading. I you you know if you're forced to re- read it during school, it's different than when you just pick up a book on your own, which I didn't do until. When I after I graduated college, which is unfortunate, but it's true. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's, I do. I do. It's, See, yeah. I love what you just said. I love the story that you just told because I know that there are people who will hear us. And you know that there are people who are sitting there and they're saying to themselves, well, I could write a book. But if you don't start, Absolutely. then you won't write the book and you may find yourself. I love it that you found yourself in a job that you probably didn't enjoy very much. And all of a sudden here came this rush of creativity. Now I know you're a poet. Where did children's literature come from? Very good question. Um, Okay. So I've been writing for about five years at that point. And um, our older daughter, Ashley's, um, it was, uh, she was three at the time and uh, she said, tell me a story, daddy. And I, and I said, um, okay, but you have to give me the title. And she said a dandelion. And I just had to tell this story like it was old hat, you know, 
now I go to her for advice, if that makes any sense. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but I just, it just flowed out and, and, and it just became a story of kindness, bravery, and inclusion and through flowers. And, and, and I loved it. And that's how it started. Now, are all your other books, are they poetry? Uh, there, well, actually there's, there's, um, I would say, yeah, most of them are. And then there's a story, um, a story, a, a Hannah story, which is, it's not a novel by any means, but it, that was my first longer story. Mm-hmm. Um, that's about a little girl whose uh, his parents split up when she's nine and it's, and, uh, it's all about how it affects her life growing up in a spiritual way. Um, and then there was Seth. Seth is my first novel. Um, the byline on that is Seth. Uh, um, the byline would be a visitor's past and you find out why, but, um, but um, that's, you know, that's, that's a story of a, um, a teenager. Um, actually at the, it, the, on the onset, he's, um, God puts it on a couple's heart to go out to dinner, even though money's tight. So they go to while walking to a diner, they hear a baby crying in a dumpster, and they rush down the the, the alley and, and save it. And then in, in the hospital waiting room, he proposes to her, and um, she asks if they can adopt the baby, and he and he smiles. And then fast forward 18 years, they they've obviously gotten married. And Seth, the they, the boy that they rescue from the dumpster, is sitting in a uh, theater writing and whatever he's writing about the it's, uh, it's uh, portrayed, you know, in the, in the story, it's, he, he writes the, the parables, but anyway, um, but to answer your question, um, and then there's, there's one with uh, uh, one books about um, parables and poetry and uh, short stories. Um, and it goes from there, but, but I, most are poetry. Yes. That's, that's a short answer. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> I apologize. No, that's okay. Yes, um, it's okay because it's not that. an easy question. You're right. Because you're a poet yeah, as well as a, as a story writer and the two are the same, only different. Where do your ideas come from? I mean, I know the first, the dandelion story that Ooh. we're going to talk about today came from Great. your daughter, but do things just sort of start flowing for you? That's a great question. Well, um, the, it depends. Like wherever I'm, when I'm driving, mm-hmm. even something is uh, the, the like a church. Uh, this one church in um, uh, I guess it's Annandale. Um, it just inspired uh, a story, um, uh, and then another another one down um, in D.C. when I was working in Cleveland Park and near the zoo. I, the, the, this um, I was sitting in a bank talking to the, one of the ladies at the desk, and I, I saw this this firehouse across the street, and that is a wonderful story. It's, it's it's called Marshmallows, and it's about a lonely lady named Jane who she, she just she goes out for a walk, and she gets hooked you know hooked up with this uh, community um, group that that they plan on renovating this firehouse. And it goes from there, but it's a wonderful. It's a, I. It's actually one of my favorite, one of my more favorite stories. But you, you, like you, you just get inspired by different things. And um, I mean, I won't. I'll keep that short. But those are two examples. Um, there's there's many. But I. Like, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> but the, you're what you're giving me is actually the way the creative brain works. I've talked oh, to enough it, enough writers. It just it it's almost like somebody else is is giving you the ideas and and talking to you in your head because that creative Absolutely. brain is it's just such an interesting uh, the creative process in itself I guess is really so interesting to talk about and I know that people perhaps who have never written and I confess I've written a little fiction myself so I get this the characters come to you you, you see them they're not actors they're people unto themselves the story comes to you out of nowhere it's sort of a almost a magical experience and if somebody hasn't ever had that kind of creative experience we both sound nuts you realize that (laughs) right right well i've I've got can i can i add to that on that yes you can please Um, when i first started writing i heard a voice in my head say paperclip paperclip And and not all the time but i wrote about a paper i did a poem about a paperclip Never heard it again. See, that's exactly the way it works. It's amazing, and it's it's different, but it's you know you're inspired somehow. You know yeah. what I mean? It's, yeah. It's 
I, I don't know. I, you get it. <laughs> I, I get it. It's it's nailing Jello to a wall. There's no, you know, you can't exactly. explain and, it. Exactly, and only we would get it, right? Yeah. yeah like, what are you talking about? We're it, in the world well, it, to try it. Exactly. Now, let's shift back to dandelion a little bit. Sure. Tell me, give me an overview. Let's give our, our listeners an overview of the book. Just sort of okay. give us a, kind of tell us what the action is and who the characters are so that they sort of have an understanding of what we're talking about, about flowers. Right. Sure. Uh, well, it, it, there's the, the premise for it is it's the main character, Sally Budfield, and uh, she's a dandelion and uh, full of hope and determination. Uh, and and there's a there's a party that's going to take place and uh, there's a list that's going to be posted in, in town hall um, within a couple of weeks. Uh, and, uh, you know, all the flowers are excited that hopefully their names on the list. And um, that that that's the pre- the beginning of it. Did, did you want me to go further or how did you want me to? I know you want to read a portion of it because there's a little of it that you'd like to share with the listeners. So this would be a good spot to do that. Sure. Um, okay. So the, the doors open that there's a crowd outside town hall um, waiting to see the list and um, the, the doors open and everyone rushes down the hall and into the courtyard because they know exactly where the, the town uh, events are list is posted. And some of them, are so excited that their names on the list. They, they almost lose a butt or two jumping up and down. Others aren't so cheery because their names not on the list, but Sally, bless her heart. Wait, just, just gracefully walks in after everyone. And, uh, she walks out and, and to the list and scans the list twice, but to her dismay, the, the name Sally Budfield is not on the list. And then something catches her eye at the bottom and it says specifically no dandelions allowed. And she's just crushed. And it goes from there. Um, but uh, does that answer your question? That in, that that introduces us to Sally, and that introduces us to the themes of flowerism. Tell me about what some of the themes are that flow through the book. Themes would well, like uh, at the beginning, maybe I don't know if it said it or not, but um, uh, kindness, bravery, and inclusion um, through flowers. And flowerism is a made-up term. It's a it's a, a nicer term than racism, and I figured that if Dr. Seuss can make up a word, so can I for the common good. I thought that was um, – it just came to me, and then I, I had little business cards. I gave out a 1,000 of them, but on the top it says, you know, I just took a picture of the cover of the book, and, and, and the, the, that, that statement at the top is, is on there. Um, but does that answer your question at all? Yes, of course it does. Tell okay. me about okay. the cover of the book. We wanted to talk about that. Oh, wow. Um well, I was very okay. Can I can I um tell you about the okay? So I got to pick the illustrations, or actually, can I? Okay, I sent out thousands and of not not thousands, maybe hundreds or whatever, if not thousands, of correspondence. Just no, 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 no. So my wife is a nanny, and she brought home Shel Silverstein's A Giving Tree, mm-hmm. and it it um sat on the coffee table all week, and and uh and so Sunday I had my mug a mug of coffee, and she was still asleep, so um. I, I was like, there's nothing I'd rather do than read this book. I was like, wow, what a great message. And then I'm like, well, let me just send one more email to, to my, my publisher, iUniverse. And usually I get, I mean, I get so much hope. And I was like, yeah, yeah. This time I was just like, what happens, happens. And that Tuesday I got something back and they said, yes, we do that now. And I'm like, you have my complete attention, you know? And, and, and so I got to pick the, the illustration style and they said, we'll start with three dandelions. I said, you don't have to go any further. Whoever whoever drew this picture should get a cookie, right? Because Sally Buds of this captures her whole soul. And um, and then I got the, you know, I get different, you know, the little process. But when I got the cover, I mean, I didn't do, I didn't have anything. I mean, it was just perfect. You have Sally, her, just the way she looks. I mean, it's, I don't, I, 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 I don't know. I wish I could <laughs> Yeah. To, to paint a picture for you. It's just so colorful and vibrant, and I, I love it. And you just saw it in your head, and you knew what you wanted, and there it was, right? Right. And well, and and there, and the pictures that they painted were were as long as the message was conveyed. You know, it was like I was like, wow, okay, that's a little different, but you know, I I don't think I had ever seen painted out in my head. 
but it, when I saw it, I'm like, that's it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I, don't I know do. If that makes sense. I don't know. <laughs> Who do you think is the audience for Dandelion, Andrew? Do you think it's? I've been asked that. Yeah. Yeah. That's... I, well, I've been. I've said. I've, I've said it to, to people before. Um, anyone from three to 103 can can get something out of it. But I, I would say three to ten, realistically. But. But I'm telling you, it has a good message of it. We need more kindness in the world more than ever. I mean, now that I, now that it's taken like, let's see, 24 years since the onset of this, this had, that I told it to, to to Ashley, our daughter, 24 years. And, it's, you know, they say God's timing is perfect. But, I mean, now it just seems like we need more kindness in the world. And that's just, I don't know. I don't know. That's what I think. It seems like there's so much meanness. I agree. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, that's a whole another ball of wax. We won't go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I know. There, you and I are not going to yeah. solve this today. You're absolutely no, no. right. But you know, whenever I'm talking about books like this, about dandelion and, and books that are written for a, a children slash maybe even a young teenager, I can see this with groups of people. I see perhaps the child reading the book by themselves, but. I always think that it's it's more interesting than that, that if a, a parent reads to a child or even a, a, several children, if they have more than one child, the ideas in the book can spark discussion among the kids and among the parents. And Absolutely. If it's a grandparent who's reading to a grandchild or even an aunt and uncle reading to a mm. niece or a nephew, I mean, exactly. that to me creates a special bond the sitting down and sharing of the written word and the ideas in the written word together creates a really special bond between people even if it's an older brother or sister reading to a younger brother or sister i think that that's really really a special idea and that even around a table you know maybe you have dinner together maybe you have a breakfast together uh, discussions could come out of the book and and kindness wow. could really be begin to flow out of this house where someone is just reading a book to a child and inclusion that's what i want that to be yes. there too because it's really the you you the, 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 the after that this part of the story it, you know you'll understand what that word what how it fits into the story but to your point about that, every Christmas my dad would read his own version of um, what is it? Saint Lieutenant Santa Claus is coming to town, or mm -hmm. what's the famous one? I'm, yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah, I cherished that every year, and and it, the way he interjects his little funny stuff that became paramount. I mean, that's it's, it's now I can't read the story without hearing my dad's funny part. You know what I mean? Well, see, and I, to your point is is, is awesome. That, that 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 sparked a nice memory. So thank you for that. <laughs> see, that's exactly what happens when people share literature like that. They create the memory, and that's exactly what will happen if someone has that memory of reading a book with their mom or their dad or their aunt or their uncle or their brother or their sister, and fifty years down the road, that memory, that soft wonderful memory will come back and it cre also creates i think a feeling for being a reader i i just think that there's so many positive things that happen out of sharing books with one another absolutely agreed now if our i i think that we've talked about the book enough that our listeners will want to know where they can get it and it is on amazon let me do some spelling and and make sure you have the specific title the specific title of the book is a dandelion now if you're not sure how to spell that it's d-a-n-d-e-l-i-o-n and then there's a colon story that touches on the sensitive topic of flowerism by andrew a-N-D-R-E-W, Everstein, E-V-E-R-S-T-I-N-E. -E. I'm sure if you just put A Dandelion by Andrew Everstein in the search feature there on Amazon and clicked on it, the book comes right up, and you'll see the adorable cover 
that Andrew was talking about. And in the upper right-hand corner, it will say something like, open here. Well, look inside. I didn't know what those words meant for a long time. If you put your cursor on those two words and you click on it, the book will open electronically and you can read a nice excerpt from the book itself so that you can really hear Andrew's wonderful prose. Now, Andrew, I know that some people don't like to buy their books from Amazon. Where else could they find a dandelion? Just just a footnote on that, um, to be in the, the book section on the, the uh, Amazon website, just because that I've learned that, that you have to be in the book section. All that information you gave was beautiful, but that's a very important piece of it is they got to be in the book section for that to come up as, as easily. Thank so, you. Um, they, you're welcome. Sorry. Um, Barnes & Noble, BN.com, um, uh, iUniverse, the letter I and then universe, um, and then type in you know, my name that, that you so gracefully spelled um, correctly. <laughs> um, you know, it, it's, you know, uh, where else can, where else can, I think that's, I think that's all. I, I, I don't think, I think that's all, that's, that's all. Yeah, I'll I know that there. I Googled your, I Googled you to see where everything was and that's how I saw some of the other books. I mean, if they just put, if they put in your name and put, say, children's author or author and poet, Andrew Everstein, then all kinds of things will come up and they can find not only Dandelion, but they can also find the other books that you've written and they can get a look at those and see what your poetry sounds like as well. You can also go to um, allpoetry.com, A-L-L, poetry.com, and type in my name and you can see over 120 poems and uh, 22 stories all for free. Um, that's that's a, a good way to get a flavor of what I do. That's excellent. Now, do you have a website that they can find? That's under construction right now. Um, but uh, to be continued, that'll be, it'll be soon. I will be getting it up soon. But you're on Facebook. So let's tell them how to find you on Facebook. It's the Andrew Everstein. A-N-D-R-E-W-E-V as in Victor, E-R-S-P-I-N-E, and yeah. And there you'll be. Yes, there I'll be. All right. I have one last question for you, Andrew. When our listeners become readers and they pick up a copy of A Dandelion, story that touches on the sensitive topic of flowerism, and they read it themselves, they share it with the children in their lives, whoever they are. And when they turn that very last page for the very last time and they close the cover, either electronically or physically, what's the bottom line message that you really want that reader to take away from the book? To go out and spread the kindness, bravery, and inclusion in the world. Um, the, the way the book ends is I, went, I end all my stories with uh, the beginning because I feel like you've, you've learned something. Now you can take that and go for it. I think that's excellent. I, I love this story. I love what you've done with this. You're a terrific author. Thank you so very much for being my guest today. On Thank Books you. I'm Land. very, very honored. I, I enjoyed laughing and talking with you like a, like a fireside chat. <laughs> it's been great. <laughs> Good. Thank you so much. And remember, you can find a dandelion story that touches on the sensitive topic of flowerism by Andrew Everstein on Amazon. You've been listening to the Books on Air podcast brought to you on webtalkradio.net. You can also hear this podcast on Spotify, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, and Apple Podcasts. I'm Suzanne Harris, and I so hope you'll join us for our next Books on Air podcast, because remember, you never know who's going to be here, and you never know what we're going to talk about. Thank you so very much for listening.